Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Today I have a deck I've been working on, just starting kind of getting back into doing ladder. Um, I took uh, quite a break over the summer, which was a lot of fun, but yeah, very excited to jump back into best of one standard. So today I have the mono white token stack, which I just kind of threw together and been slowly kind of updating and changing as I've been going up through ladder. Um, I think I just hit gold, so it's been a while since I've played, so I had to kind of start from the very beginning, but this deck has been so much fun. So basically what you're looking to do um, is just vomit out tokens onto the battlefield as quickly as possible. For the um, kind of value cards, we've got Hop To It, which is uh, make three 1-1 one, one white rabbit creature tokens for three mana as a sorcery, and then we have Sanguine Evangelist, which you may have seen in previous iterations of the Mono White deck. 2-1 Battle Cry, um, that when it enters the battlefield or when it dies, create a 1-1 one, one bat creature token with flying. So basically you have, between Hop To It and Sanguine Evangelist, these are both three for ones, essentially. And then you've got Knight Errant of Eos, another three for one, uh, with the potential of being a three for one to go and find more gas as kind of the top of the curve. For the middle of the curve, we have four copies of Case of the Gateway Express. Excellent in kind of um, many creature going wide strategies. Really good, um, obviously in Convoke decks and just really shines here as well. So a nice way to kind of give us some removal and then also buff up our team. And then we have uh, two copies of Get Lost and two copies of Soul Partition. I was kind of trying to look at finding the right sort of removal to add. I wanted kind of minimum eight pieces of removal. We've got four case of the Gateway Express, and these are kind of the flex slots. So I wanted to have access to um, something that was pretty broad in kind of what it dealt with, but also worked at instant speed. And so that's kind of why I'm looking uh, not at ossification right now, which is kind of, um, you know, more just sort of deal with anything, but all, is also an enchantment, so it's uh, slower speed. So with Get Lost, we can use this either offensively or defensively to just kind of destroy a creature enchantment or planeswalker, and then create two map tokens for their controller. But we can also use this on our own creatures in kind of like weird corner situations where you have like Regal Bunnicorn in play to actually get a net positive on number of uh, permanents and like blow someone out. You can also use it to kind of help get that last point through with Warden of the Inner Sky by making an extra token and then using that to um, to increase the number of counters on the Warden of the Inner Sky. So that's kind of another potential play with it. And then you have Soul Partition, which gives us the ability to not only get rid of their stuff and exile it, but also helps us protect our own stuff all at instant speed. So I'm kind of excited to see you know, if I want to stay with the 2-2 two -two split, this might change a little bit. And then for the rest of our two drops, we have Regal Bunicorn, two copies. Just kind of one of the payoff cards with going wide. Originally, I was running like three or four copies, but I just found that two kind of feels like a nice sweet spot just because you want to also have everything else kind of going wide to really have this be sort of like the last card that you play that just, you know, goes in and just gets all the value. So... Also, there isn't really room to run more than two, at least at the moment. Um, and then we've got four copies of Resolute Reinforcements, a nice little two for one, just helps with uh, going wide. We have four copies of Novice Inspector, again, creating two pieces of virtual cardboard for uh, one mana. And that this is great with Warden of the Inner Sky. Um, it's also really good with this new card, Season Warren Guard, which is a one, two for one mana. And then, when you attack, if you control a token, it gets plus two plus zero till end of turn. So it can be a three power attacker uh, pretty often in this deck. We've got Novice Inspector turns it on, uh, Reinforcements turns it on, potentially get lost for using it defensively, can turn it on. Evangelist and Hop to it both turn it on. And then Knight Errant of Eos can go and find something potentially to turn it on. So um, I've been pretty happy with it. For the land, we have 22 sources. 
which feels right because we want to make sure we can hit our three drops on time. It's really important that we're able to do that, uh, which is why I'm not going with like a lower land count here. Um, and then for the land, we have 15 planes um, and then four copies of Lupin Flower Village, which is one of the new lands, which is basically just here to help find rabbits. We've got six copies in the deck. We have four season Warren Guards and then two Regal Bunicorns. So it's super kind of um, basically we have nothing else to do and we have extra land. We can use this to potentially hit like a Bunicorn or a Warren Guard. But there's kind of no downside to it, um, or at least very little, just because you can use this as white mana for any creature spell, which is most of the deck. So, you know, and unless that becomes an issue, I think four copies is fine. And then we have three copies of Fountain Port, which has been really good at just making creature tokens, using our extra tokens to draw cards, um, potentially making treasure tokens, although I don't really see us using that, um, that last mode. And uh, yeah, this way we still have 19 sources of white, so it feels pretty good. Um, you might be able to go up to four. I think three is kind of the sweet spot though. Typically you'll see like one a game and then kind of use that if you need to. But yeah, this is the deck. Been really excited with it and let's jump into some games. Um, so I guess real quick, um, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much again for stopping by. Uh, it's been a while, but I, I will plan to make some more videos here and um, you know, if you end up liking my channel, consider subscribing. Um, for all of my members and everyone supporting, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Um, and uh, hoping to make more videos here soon. So again, thanks for joining. Let's uh, take a look at the games. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Yeah, I think I just hit gold four here recently, so just kind of slowly going back up through the ladder, but just having a lot of fun. And I found that the kind of like um, the gruel decks or the mono red, just burn you out super fast decks um, are really sort of demanding more removal. And so originally I just had four copies of Case of the Gateway Express, but it kind of wasn't enough to sort of deal with those. So that's why I added four extra slots for the removal, which hopefully will be pretty good here. Okay, so this could be, I guess, just the traditional um, Boros Convoke, possibly Jeskai Convoke, which has been running around a little bit. Um, let's start here with a Novice Inspector. And I haven't seen like a mono white token deck like this. I just kind of put it together myself. So it's, um, haven't run into it at least on the ladder yet. All right, let's just go ahead and power out our own warden. See if we can win the warden race. get lost feels pretty good we've got case of the gateway express coming but i think it'd be good to have an extra piece of removal here we've got three lands so we're feeling pretty good there um i guess we could hold back the inspector eh i suppose they could like attack and pump this up eh yeah let's just get in the one damage here Oh, 
Oh, interesting. This is like, I have not run into my own deck before. <laughs> or maybe this is just like a Boros variant. Yeah. Okay, very cap very happy we kept the get lost. Um yeah, because we don't have enough here with just uh case. Case would be great, but I think we need to use get lost here. Suppose we can wait until they like throw some more into it, potentially use it on their turn. That's probably fine. Um I guess if we're gonna push though. Yeah, I suppose we can use it pre-combat here. Actually, I guess if we keep Novice Inspector, we could use Case plus Novice Inspector next turn, so that seems pretty good. We could build our own Flying Warden. I think just getting rid of theirs, though. Staying ahead in life. We're trying to catch up a little bit. And then I think we're just gonna push in with just the inspector here. So yeah, maybe it would have been better to wait until their turn. Just that one point of damage might not have really been worth it. Maybe we could have got them to scry a little bit more and then used get lost a little bit later. That's probably would have been better. Yeah, because now they can use the map tokens main phase to pump, so yeah. Definitely a little bit rusty here, but it's fun. It's I'm happy getting back into the game. Okay, so they're just holding up reinforcements. That makes sense. Now we can go for Novice Inspector plus Case to get rid of their Knight Errant. And then we can go ahead and get our Warden in online and probably just double pump it, honestly. Um, let's see, we don't need a Planes. Since they'll have three power here on the ground if they need to. Yeah, let's just double pump. And that one looks pretty good. I suppose actually yeah, we could have turned on case by attacking. Yeah. Oh well. <clears throat> Definitely a little bit rusty here. <laughs> Yeah, and case on top is really nasty. Okay. See, is that just game? Six, nine, 11, 13, yeah, we're just dead. Okay, a little bit of a rocky start there, but yeah, I like the Boros version of it. Um, I wonder if they're just guy or if they're just Boros. I could see kind of messing around with the deck, maybe trying to go Boros with 
adding in the um, Imidane's Recruiter, which is a really nice top end. But like right now we've got 12 essential three drops. Um, so it's a little bit of a different deck. Okay, possibly mono red. Let's see how we do. Yeah, I guess we just cracked a clue here. I guess we can feign having virtue. Going with Evangelist feels pretty good. And then hopefully set up some cases next turn. So we could go Evangelist plus Inspector, or we could start setting up Case. Um, I kind of like Double Case here. Like they could certainly like get one of our guys, but even if they kill one of our guys, it still hits for two. I suppose we could also play like Inspector plus Case. Yeah. And then this one we can play post-combat. Yeah, that will probably do it. Yeah, I'll have to look at the Boros build to see how that turns out. But it definitely was pretty powerful against us. And I do love Imidane's Recruiter. But then, I mean, you have to play like Yoshin Frontliner, which is a little weak if you're trying to go for like the demolition. So you have it like at least eight sources. So I don't know, it's probably a different deck. This hand looks great. Just need one more land. Hopefully a land that can actually cast hop to it. But yeah, hop to it just seems really powerful. This is definitely one of the most exciting cards in the new set. And I guess now that we have basically 12 non-creature spells between like hop to it partition and the um, other removal we've got i think it's yeah 12 copies maybe it's right to only run three copies of lupin flower that could potentially be a problem with this draw because it's like a very marginal benefit since we only have six cards that it can hit in the entire deck so I can see cutting down to like maybe three of these. Because if we now draw like another Lupin Flower or if we draw like one of the um, Fountain Ports, it's gonna be pretty awkward.
Whew. Regular plans. Super happy for that. Okay. That is a nice draw. Um, I think we just go hop to it plus Knight Errant, though. I suppose we could go like Novice Inspector plus Partition if we have to. So having that option, I think maybe makes me want to keep this. Like we probably don't play it, but having like the nice like double play if we have to partition something feels pretty good. I could actually see doing that because like this preacher is annoying for sure. Otherwise we just go knight errant. Yeah, knight errant plus partition also feels pretty good. That's a nice hit. And yeah, let's just sit on partition here. we could save our own Knight Errant. I think I just want to shut down the Preacher. We've already got another Knight Errant here. And even if they get up to five land, like we still time walk them, which is fine. Still want to get rid of this preacher. Yeah, it's a really nice draw. Nice little refill. Um, can't get our guy into the air, not quite. Ooh, case is really good. I suppose we could just let them attack and get this into being a 4-5. Nah, giving them free 7 damage doesn't feel super good. I think we just sit. Yeah, case on top is fantastic. As long as they don't have a board wipe. What is that? Okay, cool. Um, I mean, they could 
pull this out potentially, but I think it's worth trying to trade here. That's fine. It's kind of annoying, but that's fine. All right, let's take out Zoraline. Guard is okay. I feel like we can do better. Do we want to pump this one more time? Oh, we could start working on the other warden here. It's probably decent. We just push. We'll just do this main phase to get this other warden going, just in case they've got removal for the first one. Ooh, Inspector is pretty good though. I mean, I guess the Warren Guard would have been fine to, to leave around since it does work out with our mana pretty well. So yeah, I guess in hindsight we could have kept the Warren on top. Now we can just push for a lot. I think we want to get Evangelist going. So now we can get both of these guys into the air. I guess we could also just like full send. Has a nice top deck. Yeah, I think we just full push here. Like even if we lose two, we're pushing an extra four damage. That feels pretty good. Yeah, and that's sixteen. That's just that's it actually. There we go. Nice. Oh, did I miscount? Oh, I guess they stabilized at one. But yeah, they're gonna need like a board wipe here to get around this. That's not going to do it. Yep. Nice. So yeah, that, that definitely felt a lot better. Um, 
The deck definitely has some legs. And I think this is definitely the deck that I want to kind of try to use to rise through the ranks. And it'll probably change a couple times over the course of the this month, maybe next month. But so far, I like it a lot. I'm also thinking of doing, um, maybe running it through like a standard event, if you guys would want to see that, just to see how it performs. Um, maybe potentially running some other big decks in standard best of one through like a standard event. But I definitely will be continuing just doing ladder here and just trying to like figure out and evolve the deck over time. So yeah, let's see how it does against Mono Red. I'm excited to see this matchup. I really like the Evangelists, they're so good. That was a nice pickup. Um, I think we might actually just go... Do we care about killing this? <sighs> yeah, I think we just go Evangelist here. Like, we could kill it now, but... I think we just want to go a little bit bigger. Do we want a fourth mana? I guess like if they kill two of our creatures, eh, that's pretty thin. If they kill one of our creatures, we could still get out the um, Night Errant. So I don't think we need it. I think we can do better. They'd have to like double burn to prevent us from playing Night Errant. And then they're not really advancing their board. I mean, it's possible. we still get rid of this manifold mouse um could also just go knight errant here yeah maybe we just go knight errant just take another turn because we're still at 19. it's a nice pickup Definitely threatening a lot of damage here. So yeah, we can case plus Knight Errant. Um, I think we just have to deal with this Manifold Mouse. Like the double strike is so nasty.
I guess we could have blocked with the, the bad token. Um, now we're going to drop to six by getting rid of the hero. So I think we hold back one Knight Errant and then we can attack with the Warren Guard and the Bath Token. The show off is potentially pushing a lot of damage though also. Um, otherwise we just attack like with all three here. Yeah, I mean that's... Okay, I think we just send with these three actually. Give them the option. Um, oh, forgot about the evangelist, whoops. Okay. Now we've got to cast this pre-combat. For some reason, I thought this would be a 4-2. Could still navigate our way out of this. But yeah, that was a little bit, a little bit of a fumble there. I think, yeah. Potentially getting with the Evangelist also, maybe. And then since we had to use the Get Lost, I could potentially make this big enough with the tokens. Ah, uh, that's too bad. Looks like they're going to get there. Maybe not. Can get us to one. That'll work. A little bit messy, but yeah, ah, fun game though. <clears throat> I definitely have to get some more reps into this deck to get a little bit more familiar with it. I'm, I literally just built it this morning, so, or yesterday, but yeah. Anyways, thanks again guys for watching. It's been fun kind of getting back. Um, definitely rusty, but the deck is super fun if you want to check it out. I'll have a link in the description, uh, both on untapped.gg and also... Um, the other site can't remember the name of it at any rate it'll be in the description but yeah thanks guys for watching and we'll see you for the next one okay so here are the overall stats for the deck um, with this uh, most recent we just went four and one um, but yeah overall this deck here is 67 percent win rate so 10 wins and five losses so far hoping to get a lot more reps in but yeah definitely check it out seems like it's just kind of overall, overall consistently doing pretty well against um, Mono Red and then just has a couple matches against some of the other matchups. So see if we can flesh this out a bit. But thanks again, guys, for watching. I appreciate you. Mm -hmm.